Hi guys, my name is Drew Brashler. Welcome to the first video of the Behringer X32. Uh, this is going to be the formal training on the uh, preamp uh, part of the Behringer X32. So let's go ahead and hop in and get this thing done. So we will see right here that we have the uh, the preamp section of the board uh, focused in on the on the on the board here. Um, so we are looking at this area right here. So we have our, it's called titled the config preamp, and we have a um, couple different knobs here. I'm going to go ahead and explain all the different ones um, to you guys right now. Excuse my light; it's falling over. There we go. Okay, so we have the 48 volt. Uh, this would be your phantom power. Uh, this one is what you would need to turn on if you have a condenser microphone or a different microphone or maybe direct box that requires phantom power to work. Uh, so once you click that, it goes ahead and sends the phantom power down the signal um, of the 48 volts. Um, so that's how you turn that on. This is a polarity switch. This basically uh, inverts uh, the signal um, by uh, switching the positive and negative feeds on the XLR channel. This is inaccurately called a phase switch. It does not actually change the phase um, because phase is uh, frequency dependent and polarity is uh, basically wire dependent. So if you press this, this is basically flipping positive. Instead of the sine wing going positive first, it would go negative first. Um, so that's how you do that. So basically to turn that on, you just press the button. Um, then we have our gain knob right here. This is going to be the, the gain selection on, um, on our channel. Uh, so basically when we plug in a mic, you'll want to raise this up until you can start seeing the levels here. Um, and then we have our low cut. Um, which basically rolls off the low end. So if you have a uh, microphone um, on a speaker, you don't want them going through the subwoofers. Uh, so this is one way to uh, reduce the amount of low end going into the subwoofers uh, by cutting by doing this low cut. Or say um, you wanted to have an overhead mic not include any of the uh, low end um, on the, on the drum set, you can go ahead and press low cut, and then you can dial this in um, to maybe like 400 hertz. A good, a good general starting point is 100 hertz. That is uh, where most subwoofers will start cutting, coming in, um, and generally there's not uh, much speech stuff uh, below 100 hertz that's actually useful to us. A lot of the pops and the rumbling and everything is, is lower than that. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, show you the screen portion of... Um, of the configuration and preamp. Um, so basically to select that um, onto the screen, we would press this button here called View. So I'm going to go ahead and pan out here and show you guys uh, the Behringer X32 here in its glory. OK, so we have um, our knobs up here. I'm going to go ahead and show you the screen primarily right now. So this is the screen. I'm going to go ahead and move this light out of the way so you guys can see that better. There we go. So uh, starting from the top, we have um, our um, basically the channel number up here. And then right here, we have some LEDs showing you guys what uh, is coming in on that channel. So I'm going to go ahead and select my uh, microphone that I'm talking into. And we can go ahead and see that we now have um, our channel. So. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and explain just a couple of the different things on here, uh, like the low cut. Right down here is the low cut, and you can see that by it says low cut and 136 hertz. So if I was to go ahead and start dialing this up, I can either use this knob that's right below um, this screen, or I can go back over to the left side of my board and adjust the frequency knob that's right above the low cut switch. But you guys will start hearing this when I, I, I'm talking here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, dial the low cut up, um, raising the frequency. Uh, frequency um, it, that it cuts off. So we're going to go ahead and go up. And so you, now you'll notice that I don't really have any low end in my voice. It's very high. Um, and that's basically cutting everything from 400 hertz and down. Uh, it's basically just cutting it cutting it off. So we're going to go ahead and go back to 100, uh, 137, which is what my pastor, we had him on. Um, so that is that. Now, uh, source is the next thing that we're going to be talking about. Um, this is basically um, what channel input on the back of the board is going to this specific fader. Um, so we're going to go ahead and go to the left side of the board over here. And we're going to go to fader number one. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and press select. Okay, so we press select, and that basically brings up um, that fader in 
V uh, in the LCD screen. So that's now this channel is selected. Now this gives us the ability to adjust anything um, in the upper portion of this board uh, on this channel. So all of all of these uh, adjustments can now be made on this specific channel. Um, so I have a CD player playing with a CD right now, just some piano music. I'm going to go ahead and route that into uh, this fader right here. Um, and I'm going to show you guys how to do that and adjust the gain and whatnot. So we're going to go right back over here to our LCD screen. And we're going to go and look at source, which is right here. So I know that my CD player is coming in on aux 1. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and turn this rotary knob, and we're going to page it down. And it goes all through the inputs, all the way up to 32. And then we now start seeing aux 1, 2 through 6. And then we have our USB, and then we have our FX. So basically, we can put anything on this fader that we want to. But right now, we're going to go ahead and select aux 1 into this fader. So we're going to go ahead and press Select. Now we have the CD player um, into this channel. So if I was to turn this up, you'd start hearing the piano music playing. Very good. But since um, I'm wanting to show you guys a little bit more than just patching a channel, I'm also going to want to show you some, some gain. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn down the gain on this channel. And you can do that by um, adjusting the trim right here. So we can turn, this, uh, turn the gain down, or we can turn it up from here as well. Or we can do it on the left side of the board over here we can do the same adjustment here. Okay, so I'm gonna let you guys hear that. So basically we're gonna turn on uh, some of the music here so you can hear that. And I'm gonna go ahead and boost this up. So this is basically just selecting how much uh, level we wanna put into this fader. A good, uh, a good level to have um, coming in on this is for your, um, is for your signal to be in the green still, but not too much into the yellow. Uh, well, sorry, with this one that has orange. Um, so you can see um, down here that we have negative 30, negative 18, negative 12, and clipping is is at zero. So there's a lot, there's a little bit of uh, of data on that, but the better one to look at is over on the LCD screen. You have a lot finer. Um, look at what's coming into that fader. So you can see that we have green, and then the yellow is here, and then there's the clipping at the very top. Um, and so a good level to have that in is around the negative 18 to negative 12 areas, as I found that that's a really good uh, spot to have that. Um, it's enough signal to have um, everything be very noise-free. And so then also on this page, uh, we have our link button. Uh, this basically links an uh, even pair of faders. So it can uh, link uh, fader 1 and fader 2, or fader 3 and fader 4. Uh, they have not released a, a possibility to link odd, fa odd faders yet. Uh, soon they will hopefully do that. Um, so by, by linking a fader, all you would have to do is press this link button, and then it says, would you like to link both channels? Uh, and then you can press OK uh, to go ahead and do that. Um, then we have uh, our source button, which I already showed you guys. Uh, we also have delay. So we can actually dial in a certain amount of delay on the microphone. So say you have your kick drum, and then you also have your overhead mic, uh, and you have your snare drum versus your overhead. Um, um, you can delay the snare mic to be um, getting the same sound into the board as the overhead at the same time. So basically, he hits the snare, it goes, the sound hits the snare mic first, and then a few milliseconds, you know, a few, uh, you know, microseconds later, it hits the... Um, hits the overhead mic. So we can go ahead and basically delay the snare mic by a couple feet. Um, it also says feet up here. Um, let's go ahead and get a better view on that. So you can go ahead and measure it out with a tape measure. You know, it, say it's uh, two and a half feet away from the snare. Uh, so we can go ahead and dial in two and a half feet and then press the button. And now it is delayed by uh, 2.7 or 2.2 milliseconds. Uh, also, in this, we can go ahead and insert um, our, uh, you can insert maybe like a 32-band equalizer, or you can insert uh, different effects um, into this channel. And so you can go ahead and select the insert point. Uh, it gets you uh, pre and post um, 
EQ. Uh, so you can go ahead and uh, insert post-EQ or pre-EQ. And then you can also put where you want this insert to go on this right-hand side. So you can go ahead and put it into any of the effects racks um, and also into the aux uh, sends. You can use a hardwired aux um, insert. Say you wanted to use a piece of outboard gear to insert, um, you can do that as well. So that is a, a very quick kind of just tutorial on the configuration and preamp portion of the board. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to post below or any of my sound team, you can send me an email or give me a call. Uh, thank you very much for uh, listening in.